two years since I built this engine during lockdown using just whatever was in the garage and on the section. Uh, New Zealand was locked down and um, I didn't even go out for, you know, glue or sealer or anything. It had to be whatever I had here. So to celebrate two years, I and because of the other engines don't have parts to get them going, we're going to get this old girl going. This is a low temperature hot air engine and the concept was a cunning and subtle one. Yes, sir. As cunning as a fox who's just been appointed professor of cunning at Oxford University. What can I build um, using hand tools only and parts that were already on the section and uh, get it working with ball bearings and things like that? Because we've seen um, homemade Stirling engines on the web, you know, made out of tin cans and bent wire and stuff like that, which is great and it must be fun to get those going. But I wanted something a bit more permanent and um, something that would, you know, be quite big, really. Let's see if this is working. Okay, we have fire. Now, there's a hole in the middle of this uh, create a hot area. Okay, that's definitely going. I just burned my finger, so that's one way to tell. So it's away. Um, it's probably not full speed. It can do better than that. If you look at some of the old videos of this, going back a couple of years, um, yeah, I don't think it's at full speed yet. things I would do differently if I was building this again. I'd have a narrower vertical rod there to reduce the drag and instead of a bunch of bronze rings down in there as the um, gland I would use a piece of graphite uh, brush from an old generator and s drill the hole through that. There's no heat coming through the top yet but the um, bottom plate is hot. I'd say it's still, it's still speeding up a bit. It's still speeding up, I think. Good to see this still works after two years. No reason it shouldn't. Very nearly silent. It's got a slight knocking sound. And it's pretty Heath Robinson. Uh, there were no plans beyond what was in my head and I looked at all the parts I'd laid out on the floor in the garage and thought really it all came down to the, um, the diaphragm, the power piston diaphragm around here. So this diaphragm is uh, the weather seal behind the headlight of a car and basically the amount that that could go in and out um, determined the power stroke yeah so it was made uh, hand tools except for a um, a drill press uh, computer fans gave me all the little bearings and the rest was stuff I just picked up the frame wood is from a sun umbrella And we've got a couple of pots down the bottom. The displacer inside there is made of um, polystyrene. And it was cut in a circular way on the drill press. There are pictures of all that in my of all that uh, construction in my first couple of movies, movies on this channel. So we've got a reasonable revs for this engine. Remember it's got a huge displacer moving up and down in there. Uh, that allows it to run on a fairly low temperature, like one little flame, really, one meth's flame. 
but it means that it's going to run slowly. Which was, which was what I had in mind. 